Hello, I'm Diane Richard, your host of the Veterans Channel. Recently, I had the absolute honor of meeting with an individual who is no stranger to helping our veterans. Some of you may know him as well. His name, Jack Wagner, a veteran himself who served in the Vietnam War and he is a recipient of a Purple Heart and other military accommodations for his service to our country. Jack is no stranger in knowing the challenges that our servicemen and women suffered mentally, medically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually due to the aftermath of serving in a wartime environment. After serving not only his country and his community, Jack envisioned a greater need to serve those who were struggling with numerous barriers in the aftermath of war. He found a need to help support servicemen and their families with employment opportunities and assist them to transitioning to some new careers. His assistance doesn't stop there. Jack realized that some of our service heroes returned mentally and physically scarred from the wages of war and needed greater support to sustain a better lifestyle. You know, it's unfortunate the veterans have a higher unemployment rate than civilians, and this is truly unacceptable. It is not always easy adjusting to a new lifestyle as a civilian. With that being said, Jack has sought out to assist as many veterans as possible and their families to find a career that fits their interests, their needs, and one that leads them to sustaining a successful future through his Pittsburgh Hires Veterans Program. Let's listen to Jack as he tells the story of this remarkable program. We're here today with Jack Wagner, and he is the director of Pittsburgh Hires Veterans. Hi, Jack. How are you doing, Diane? Thanks for being here today Thank you. with and, and telling our, our viewers all about Pittsburgh Hires Veterans and mm -hmm. what this program is all about. Mm -hmm. So with that lead in, I'll, I'll take it away. Well, Pittsburgh Hires Veterans uh, was started approximately three years, a little over three years ago, to address a significant need for veterans, which is for veterans to be able to find jobs, to be gainfully employed. Uh, when you stop and think, a veteran is guaranteed a burial spot uh, by our country, but is not guaranteed a job. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, w when I often think of that, I, I say we may have our priorities mixed up a little bit. I tad, yes. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, the veteran unemployment rate is higher than the general population. Now there's a lot of reasons behind that, but there is a significant need for veterans to find help in terms of seeking employment. So what Pittsburgh Hires Veterans, the whole concept uh, of what it is and what it's all about, is to meet with veterans individually, such as John, who's here now, uh, another veteran uh, next door in, in, in the adjoining uh, room, uh, is to meet and assess the skill set of an individual veteran. And veterans, generally speaking, bring great qualities to the workforce. They're punctual, uh, they're team players, they're mission oriented, um, they, they are creative. Um, when they run into a roadblock, they generally know how to get around mm -hmm. it. So they bring a lot of soft skills to the workforce. So we believe that veterans are a great asset to employers. Right. It's a matter of convincing the employers of that and getting the veterans in front of the employers. Uh, and that's precisely what we do at Pittsburgh Hires Veterans. We um, sit and speak and assess the skill set of an individual veteran, help them reconstruct their resume, uh, maybe help in some of the interview techniques, mm -hmm. some of the networking that may be necessary to find the right job. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then um, look at what is out there in terms of jobs um, on various websites to see what's available. And if the individual veteran thinks that's a job that they're qualified for and they would like to do, 
we will then make a connection with the employer. Do you have a lot of employers out there or know of a lot of employers out there that have bought into this project? The, the concept, yes. Yes. And more and more are as time goes on. Uh, some employers we've placed three, four, five, ten um, uh, veterans over the last couple of years. Others we haven't cracked the, uh, uh, the case yet with, with some of them, but over time we will. Uh, and, but what seems to be their apprehension? Well, the, the common complaint that I hear from veterans is I will apply for 10, 20, 50 jobs and never have a response. I will, and, and in other words, there, there is no comeback um, even saying we received your resume, mm -hmm. we received your application, uh, we reviewed it, and um, you don't, there, this is not a good fit for you and for us. So a common complaint we hear from veterans is they never get in front of the employer. Mm, that's, that, that's, a, that's a sad loss. Mm -hmm. That's a very sad loss. When you seek out these employers, do, do you seek them out or do the employers seek you out? That's a great question. Um, both directions. Uh, we have, there's not a week that goes by that we don't have one or two employers call us and say they're interested in getting in, uh, veteran uh, prospective employees from us. Uh, so we have a list in the other room up on the wall, a big list that uh, takes up half the wall with about 250 employers wow. on it. Different categories, mm -hmm. uh, construction, technology, Skill transportation, sets. food industry, mm -hmm. healthcare, uh, And then we have under those categories, we have a list of various entities that we have contact information with them, such as the HR director maybe even the president of the company. Mm -hmm. if, if I can reach out to the president of a company to help uh, a veteran get a job, I'll do so. Um, but if we, can make, if we can assess and help the veterans be prepared for the job, and at the same time contact an employer that has a need uh, and get the veteran in front of the employer, we have a good chance of being successful. Awesome. That's that's awesome. Are veter are excuse me are employers oftentimes apprehensive in being a part of this concept because a veteran may have sustained some issues coming back from war. Uh, if that's the case, you'll never really hear it from uh, an, em an employer. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't think many think along those lines. Um, you know, uh, veterans, it, depending on when they served and where they served, right. um, not all veterans have been in combat, um, but those who have been in combat, including myself, uh, I think um, veterans who have been in very difficult situations in their life, um, that is an asset um, that they are prepared to tackle any situation. And um, I think it's a great quality that a veteran has. Now, do some veterans have cognitive issues due to their uh, um, experiences in war and, and, and other experiences they may have in, in, right. in the military? I, I know there's sexual trauma in the military. There is with women in the military today. Mm -hmm. Women play a larger percentage of veterans today than ever before. Um, but uh, I would hope uh, employers don't think that way. I, I don't know of any in particular, uh, but um, the quality, again, the, the positive side of, of what a veteran brings to the table uh, is a great asset to every employer. I would think so. I mm -hmm. would think so for all of the reasons that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I would certainly think so. So I understand that uh, in my reading, I understand that, that through this process, and I, I just want to segue back a little bit to um, when someone comes in the door and how they're assessed. Mm -hmm. And I did read a little bit about there was there's three steps to your success plan. 
there is the enlist, mm -hmm. educate, and employ. Right. So talk about that a little well, bit. Well, enlist is, is uh, signing basically up. signing up, whether, and that could be done in a whole wide variety of ways. Um, John, who's sitting right here, John and I met at a job fair, a small job fair. Um, and um, uh, we got to know John very well and have worked with him uh, extensively uh, for a, a, a good period of time. And uh, he has great qualities and uh, he's a great employee, whoever ends up getting him. Uh, so uh, we meet a lot of veterans at job fairs. Uh, you may have noticed, Diane, there's some billboards around here. There's one out, out front on Banksville Road that has um, our contact information. Yes. Uh, we have a sign uh, outside that's lit in the evening. Uh, we have a, a website, Presence, uh, LinkedIn. We, we're very, social media in a variety of ways. So uh, we reach out in every way we know how. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, one of the things that we do, and I'm very proud of it, is that we work in a very uh, uh, open way with other veteran groups. We work well with the Veterans Administration. We work well with the VFW, the DAV, the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans Association, uh, Soldier On. Um, I could go on and on in mm -hmm. terms of Veterans Leadership Program, Veterans Place. Uh, we have good communication with all of those veteran organizations and sometimes they will send a veteran that they're working with to us and sometimes we'll do the same. We'll, a veteran may have another need other than employment, right. so we have an open line of communication with them. So we, we really have a, a, a very open communication process with other veteran organizations because this is all about the veteran. This isn't about the organization. Right. This isn't about who gets credit for someone getting a job or redirecting their life in a positive way. It's about helping the veteran. And it's great that all of these organizations are working together, you know, for the mm -hmm. same common purpose, again, to help the veteran. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is, this is awesome stuff. So, your mission accomplished status. I was really impressed by that. So, tell us a little bit about this mission accomplished status. That we have accomplished a lot and we have a lot to accomplish. Well, it, you know, the mission is never completely accomplished, as you know. Right. But it seems as time goes on, we've been more and more successful. And that's because there's a good team of people here. Um, uh, Dana Brown, who's my director of operations, George Scott, uh, one of our intake specialists, uh, Jim Rossi, who's a, a licensed rehabilitation a counselor, uh, Christy, who uh, does m much of the administrative work here. They all, this team concept has been very uh, uh, valuable to us. Uh, here we are the first week of March uh, 2019, and we've been uh, successful in helping 21 veterans get jobs awesome. this year. That is awesome. So um, as more and more veterans become aware of us, uh, as more employers have confidence in us that we're, um, that we're assessing a veteran well, we're trying to uh, help them, coach them along the way um, as to what they need to do to get in front of an employer. Uh, employers uh, have begun to believe in us more. So um, that there's, a, there's a combination there of working uh, intently with the veteran and knowing the needs of the employer. And if you can match the two, you really have a, a winning formula. Absolutely, you do. Are there any costs associated with a veteran coming in and, and seeking your support? Well, we don't charge a veteran, and I, I thank you for asking that question because I left that out. Um, this is a free service. Mm -hmm. It's a free service to the veteran, and it's a free service to the employer, uh, which is really stunning because um, uh, job placement agencies out there charge significant fees to place someone uh, with an employer. Uh, so uh, we, we don't, we don't, and that's been our standards since the inception of this organization. 
We are a 501c3. Okay. Uh, oh, we okay. operate on a very small budget. Uh, it has grown a little bit as we've brought a couple uh, more people on board. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still, I would match our organization in terms of our cost of operation with any organization. Uh, and um, so uh, we, we are dependent on um, foundations, corporations, individuals making a donation to a 501c3. And um, Pittsburgh Hires Veterans is an official 501c3. So it's important that uh, anyone out there that wants to help veterans, that would be a great place and a great organization, our organization be a great organization for them to contribute to. Because if you really were to look at what our cost is in terms of helping a veteran find a job and all the time and effort that goes into it, uh, it's a very small amount of money. So when a veteran comes in and is seeking the support, what paperwork do they need to bring with them? It, do, like, do they need to bring their DD-214? Do they need to bring a resume? Do they need to bring, you know, what paperwork, or is any paperwork, is anything necessary, or when they come through the door, they're assessed and you will let them know what is needed? Uh, we have an intake form, and the intake form we ask every veteran to fill out. Uh, we want a copy of their resume. Uh, we do not require um, the DD-214 form. Uh, we want to know on the intake form, the veteran will list when they were in the military, what years they were in the military, what kind of a discharge they had, um, and uh, other pertinent uh, information that an employer would be looking for. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and obviously we want to see a resume. Uh, and as, as people in the military leave and become veterans, um, there's supposed to be a transition assistance program, TAP program, T-A-P, that helps them put together a resume. Um, some of the resumes that we see need a lot of improvement. Mm -hmm. Uh, because generally speaking, if you're applying for a job, that, that resume should be tailored for the job. Correct. And, and you should have a good general resume, so to speak. Um, there, uh, Dana Brown, who's our Director of Operations, is very good at helping veterans enhance their resumes. Uh, so uh, we, a lot of work is done here in, in that regard. Uh, so, uh, but... In addition to that, we want to know a veteran, we want to know a little bit more about them mm -hmm. than the average employer would ask. For instance, we want to know if, if um, they've had any challenges in life, in their past, whether or not they've had any DUIs, mm -hmm. whether or not there's any uh, criminal background issues. And, and we, want, we want to have an open communication right. with the veteran. Because if, if we know more about the veteran, we can have an open communication with the employer. And, mm -hmm. and that's the way to really uh, convince an employer that there's integrity in this process. And uh, so I think we do as good a job at that as anyone does in terms of getting to know the employer, getting to know the uh, veteran, the future employee, so we can communicate that information with the employer. Do you typically have any problems, just say for instance if a veteran has some type of a barrier that mm -hmm. he or she feels may keep them from getting employment, is there a way that you could help them through that process potentially? Yes, yes. There's, there's some uh, veterans who have had um, some convictions mm -hmm. uh, in the past. There are uh, various um, groups in this region. Um, uh, Duquesne University, for instance, has helped several of our veterans uh, clear some of uh, the issues from their record, uh, from uh, simply background uh, problems that they had previously in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, uh, what's really most important, though, is the honesty associated with it. Um, if, if 
if, for instance, if a veteran were to apply for a job and they had a criminal background issue and they don't let the employer know, the employer is going to do that background. Find it. Exactly. And they're, they're going to uncover it. So, you know, we tell every veteran, whatever problem you have, be up front. it's going to surf, yes. surface and be up front uh, with it and do it right from the start. And um, generally, that's, that works. Uh, in terms of uh, the employer simply being more confident because the individual was upfront and honest. Right, right. And it, that, that says a lot for the integrity of the person. Mm -hmm. And that's what employers are looking for. You're right. So, a, a veteran comes in, they go through the process, uh, they are given a job, mm -hmm. and that job just doesn't work out. So this process is not a one and done, is it? Or they can come back again and again to, for your service? How, how does this work? If, the, if something didn't work out the first time, can they come back and seek the services again? Absolutely. Uh, we want every veteran to be gainfully employed. We want them to have the kind of job that they want. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a step-by-step -step process. Um, you, it's, it's hard to walk, come out of the military and you don't have a college education or you don't have a specialty skill set mm -hmm. and get a, a job that makes sixty, seventy thousand, eighty thousand dollars 70000 So number one, we're very realistic in communicating with a veteran uh, what potential jobs are out there uh, and what, what's realistic. Uh, so. Uh, but yes, uh, there's been a number of veterans that we have placed and find that that isn't the job they really wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and they move on. And uh, yes, we'll work with them again to find uh, another more suitable job. Uh, and hopefully that, well, that one is uh, the job that they can become gainfully employed. Right. Right, and that's that's the objective. Mm -hmm. that that's is the objective. objective. Now, and I'm spouses also, we work with spouses. So, and and uh, a, a a spouse of a veteran is very important to us, because sometimes a veteran may have issues that they can't be gainfully employed. Right. Uh, consequently, uh, helping the spouse, and we've helped a number of spouses uh, find jobs, quality jobs. This, this, is, this is awesome. I, I love mm -hmm. hearing this. Now, I know you have a billboard out front. Right. And you have different billboards around the city. Yeah. I know that you're on social media. I know that people can get in touch with you by those means. Is it just for Pittsburgh? No. No, it's not just for Pittsburgh. It's, uh, uh, you're asking some very good questions. <laughs> so you've done your research. That's good. Uh, we'll help a veteran no matter where they're from. Um, our name, Pittsburgh Hires Veterans, defines the region that we're part of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, uh, and everyone knows Pittsburgh, so it makes sense, and we're located in Pittsburgh. So it makes sense for us to uh, have the name Pittsburgh Hires Veterans. Uh, but um, we have helped veterans um, from surrounding states. Okay. Um, one veteran, um, we helped relocate from New Jersey to Pittsburgh. Uh, we helped another veteran that was living in Kentucky find a job in Pittsburgh. Uh, and how they find out about us, sometimes um, I'm not sure. It's generally the internet, but um, uh, we, will, we will reach out to employers virtually anywhere. And um, it's not uncommon for me to pick up the phone and call an HR director uh, for a company in Iowa who needs a person here in Western Pennsylvania, but the hiring process is done by a central location mm -hmm. in the country. And I have no hesitation uh, to uh, call someone for a veteran and say, uh, you know, my common pitch to an employer is it's my understanding that you, that you are uh, sensitive in terms of hiring veterans and would we would very much appreciate if you would give this veteran an interview. 
they have applied for a job within your company and this is the job and this is the, uh, the certification number for the job. Uh, and if you would give that person an interview, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised the capabilities that they have. So uh, again, that's our, that's our, our formula, so to speak, mm -hmm. is, to, is to make a connection with the employer that a veteran has shown interest in working for uh, and trying to create a fit in terms of their skill set and the need of the employer. Okay. Now, I understand because it says Pittsburgh hires veterans and we're located here in Pittsburgh. That does not mean, or does it, correct me, that you're a part of the city of Pittsburgh, meaning the governmental portion of the city of Pittsburgh. Are you with the city no. or is this is a separate entity in its own? No, absolutely not. We're not part of the city, the county, the state, or the federal government. We're our own individual nonprofit, 501c3. Um, we chose the name Pittsburgh Hires Veterans to identify where, where we're are. based. Right. Yeah. And, and basically um, helping people first and foremost in this region and having a, a better dialogue and communication with employers in this region. And the reason I ask that is because I just want to make clear to our viewers that not to go to the city of Pittsburgh HR department oh, no. and try to apply, <laughs> yeah. you know, they need to come here. Right. So we've made that perfectly clear. Yes. So when, when the veterans go out uh, to get a job, this is, can be full-time, part-time, you know, it, they're not just restricted to um, a, a, a part-time position or, or a full-time position. They can, they whatever type of position they're looking mm -hmm. for that's where you try to get them placed the far majority are full-time positions okay uh, but we have good communication with a number of uh, colleges and universities this coming saturday we'll be doing something jointly uh, with point park university oh, okay. a veterans event okay. um, point park has really taken the lead on on this initiative but um, we work a lot with college students who are veterans. Um, mm -hmm. Many times college students, uh, veterans or not veterans, uh, are looking for part-time work. Um, and as a result of that, we're more than happy to pursue and to help them mm -hmm. find a part-time position. Uh, and and it, it, that could be during the school year or it could be during the off time generally in the summer months. Okay. So yes, we, we do a lot of, of work uh, trying to tie veterans into um, whatever their desire is, basically, uh, whether that be a full-time job or a part-time job. This is awesome. So, I also read, since you said I do my homework, I've also read your board of directors. Mm -hmm. These are some extraordinary people. Well, I read their you. bios. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Can we talk a little bit about your, your board? Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a, a very impressive board. Y yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, um, let me start with Marty Prentice. I don't know if you know Marty Prentice. I do Prentice. know Marty. Yeah, Marty's you know a former, Marty very well. Yeah, a former director of the Hill House yes. Association, very knowledgeable about nonprofits. Yes. And the Pittsburgh community. Uh, and he's a great asset to our board. Um, he has brought a number of uh, good ideas uh, uh, to us and to me personally. So he's been a great asset. Uh, General Tom Jones, um, who started Semperfy Odyssey, uh, which is a, uh, another nonprofit, but one that does an incredible job of helping veterans who really have a, a difficult time transitioning back into civilian life. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has a camp up in Somerset, the 500 acre camp. Um, wow. That's the old uh, Boy Scout camp um, where five or six times a year uh, for an entire week, uh, veterans from all over the country come and have a, a week long uh, educational uh, plus um, 
a, a, a real kind of getting to know who you are environment. Okay. And um, where- A lot of them need that. Yes, and, and, and he has done an incredible job uh, doing that, plus he has, uh, as part of that camp, uh, different schools from the region and across the country that will uh, send um, children that are having difficulty uh, in terms of, of um, their grades and staying in school with mentors within the school uh, going to the camp for uh, an entire week. Uh, and that camp has done incredible uh, things for anyone and everyone who's ever been there. And I always recommend go there at least one day and and see what general jones does so um we're fortunate to have him on our, on our board ron poor Padich. ron poor Padich is the uh, director of the center for military medicine research at the university of pittsburgh um, and he is a veteran incidentally everyone i've mentioned is a veteran so far um, General Jones is a, a veteran, Marty Prentice is a veteran, Mar uh, uh, Ron Port Paddish is a veteran, uh, and uh, Ron has done marvelous things in terms of the work that's done for the military uh, through uh, the Center for Military Medicine Research to come up with innovative ways, but he's brought also great ideas uh, to Pittsburgh Hires Veterans. Was he a doctor in this in the service as well. Yes, he was. In, he's a, a pol polemologist, a, a lung specialist, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a physician, actually, in the military Okay. for decades. Um, uh, Tony Accomando. Tony Accomando uh, is really a, an incredible guy who uh, puts his heart and soul into everything he does. And uh, he started a group uh, by the name of Life-Changing Service Dogs for Veterans, which has helped provide already 30 uh, medical service dogs to individuals in this region and has raised the monies for that to happen. In addition, he's been involved in a multitude of other, uh, a variety of other causes uh, related to veterans. Uh, his brother, Don Acomando, uh, who is the um, hope I get this right, the uh, Director of Veteran Services uh, at Duquesne University. Okay. And also an Air Force veteran. Tony was an, an Army veteran. Um, uh, Don has uh, made a number of recommendations uh, to us in terms of per sending veterans to us, number one, uh, but also a multitude of, of great ideas. George Scott, who you met, Yes. Um, uh, Don uh, uh, tied George into us initially. So that's one good example of, of uh, the kind of veterans that he has sent to Pittsburgh Hires Veterans. Uh, Michelle Brooks uh, is a licensed vocational rehabilitation counselor uh, on our board, and she has just great ideas in terms of, of her sensitivity to understanding the needs of veterans. Um, uh, Ted Glippus is our treasurer. Mm -hmm. Ted, Ted is a retired executive of Price Waterhouse and really is one of those guys that uh, keeps everything, you know, in, in line. In, in line. <laughs> and, and, and he's a great person, um, and, but he has, has, has brought incredible uh, positive suggestions uh, to this organization. And his son is a lawyer who also uh, has helped us uh, gratis on a number of initiatives, including uh, us becoming our own 501c3. Very nice. We have a tremendous board, and the board has, has done incredible uh, things. And, uh, oh, Ryan Hodels. Ho 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 Ryan, it, um, the reason why I skipped Ryan is that uh, he's in the military. Okay. And uh, Active duty now? A, a, well, he's, he's in the uh, reserves. Okay. And uh, he's, he's been very valuable, uh, can generally only participate in a board meeting by calling in. Uh, but, um, yeah, he's brought some good ideas and some great suggestions. So, 
Uh, but we're always open-minded uh, in terms of uh, the people who are on our board or potential people that possibly will be in the future. Well, you have a dynamic board. I, yeah, I can you. say that. I mean, the, the people that you named and, and given a little bit about their backgrounds, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's very well-rounded and they are all veterans. Yes. So yeah. that, is, that is awesome. So what else do you want to tell our viewers about Pittsburgh Veterans for Hire? Well, it, it's a, an organization that is, continues to move forward. And the more we can get the word out about what we do, um, the more successful we will be in terms of helping veterans. So the, the, the real goal here is a veteran getting a job. And there's a lot of high fives in this office any day and any time a veteran gets a job. You know, we, it's really a, a, a mini celebration, so to speak. Awesome. Uh, because we, real, we realize that that potentially changes that person's life, their family's life, in a very positive way. Uh, and it's, it, I personally believe after you, you address the physical and the cognitive issues of veterans, the most important thing you can do is help them find gainful employment. Yes. And that will address a whole bunch of issues. If someone is just not getting a paycheck, but also feels good about themselves, they're, they're going to work every day, and they know they're, they're being productive again. They're part of the community mm -hmm. again. Part of society. P part of society. Yes. And um, to a veteran, that means more to a veteran, I think, than the average person. Because they've been productive in a different way right. at a different time. Mm -hmm. And they want to continue to be productive. So them finding gainful employment is very important. Well, the high fives that you give around here for all of the people that you've given jobs, allow me to give you a high five for doing <laughs> such you, an Doc. awesome job. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome job. Thank you very much. Well, it's a team. It's, it's a, a team. team. It's yeah. a team effort. Right. Awesome. Now, you do something else. Tell yes. us about this other venture you have going on. Well, the other venture ties in directly with veterans also. Uh, Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs. Okay. Uh, Guardian Angels Medical Service Dog is an incredible nonprofit organization uh, that was founded about 10 years ago by Carol Borden. Uh, and it, it has lo operated out of Florida, uh, a small town by the name of Williston, Florida. Uh, and they have provided over 300 medical service dogs, highly trained medical service dogs mostly to veterans with significant needs. And when I say significant needs, I mean uh, post-traumatic stress, uh, traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. cognitive issues, and sometimes mobility issues. Um, those dogs are provided at no cost to the person that receives it, um, but the person has to qualify uh, to, get the, to get a medical service dog. It takes a year and a half to train and raise a medical service dog. Um, Where do you get the dogs? Uh, the dogs are mostly bred at, um, at the location in Florida. Okay. And, and in addition, uh, rescue dogs uh, are part of it, about 20% mm -hmm. of the, the animals. And, he, and they're generally uh, uh, German shepherds, uh, German shepherds for a uh, uh, the reason that they're very intelligent dogs and they're strong dogs and they can help in terms of mobility issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, Guardian Angels, again, has been very successful because of these dogs are as well-trained as any dogs I've ever been around. Uh, in terms of them addressing the specific issue of a veteran or the recipient receiving the dog. Um, in the training process, the final couple weeks, the recipient of the dog has to go and live and be part of the training. So the individual um, issues associated with the veteran or the person receiving it are part of the final days of training. In other words, if a person had a glucose imbalance or is a diabetic, right. 
um, the dog will be taught on how to detect um, when that glucose imbalance is about to happen. Right. Uh, or if the, the person is in a wheelchair, um, the dog will be properly trained to be able to adjust to a person with a wheelchair. Keep in mind, when a dog's walking beside a wheelchair, you don't want the dog's tail getting caught or foot run right. over or, or whatever, and at the same time in the right place where the wheelchair is all the time. So there's little training techniques with everyone that receives a, a dog. These dogs are miracle workers. Um, guardian angels. Yeah, guardian angels, medical service dogs. Thank you. They, they, there has not been a single suicide by a veteran uh, that has received a dog. There's only been one, one divorce in over 300 recipients, when in fact wow. the divorce rate with military veterans is higher than that of the general population. Uh, but um, the suicide rate is double that for mm -hmm. veterans uh, compared to the general population. So uh, these dogs have, are miracle workers. The good news is um, th there has been tremendous support in this region for Guardian Angels Medical Service dogs. Uh, uh, Tony Accomando that I mentioned earlier uh, started a group called Life Changing Service Dogs for Veterans and has been very involved in Guardian Angels being part of this back at its inception. Um, PNC has a much strut and has really stepped to the plate beyond any uh, company, corporation in this region uh, to support Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs. I mentioned the Mutt Strut. This year will be the fourth annual Mutt Strut where uh, anyone with a dog can go and kind of take their dog for a half mile walk and, and um, uh, support a good cause. Right. Um, so PNC has been a, 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 a tremendous asset to Guardian Angels, uh, particularly in this region is spreading out in other regions of the country also. So a lot of good things have been going on here. Because of the great support in the Pittsburgh region, they cannot meet their demand uh, for medical service dogs. So they want, want to build a, a second campus. Well, that's going to be here. Oh. That's going to be here in the Pittsburgh region. We um, closed on buying a parcel property in the airport area, oh, 102 acres to um, build the Pittsburgh campus of Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs. So this, our region will be the first region outside of Florida to have uh, such a campus. And um, which means that there'll, there'll be more medical service dogs available for more people in need of a service dog uh, in this region and beyond the region. Um, Guardian Angels has provided medical service dogs to uh, individuals in 21 states. So, and I'm sure that will continue to increase as time goes on. So it's been a great cause, a great effort, and good things are going to happen uh, um, here in Pittsburgh to really identify ourselves in another way of really providing um, help to veterans. Now, Guardian Angels helps um, individuals beyond veterans also. For instance, um, the Parkland School District disaster in Florida, mm -hmm. yes, where um, you know a number of children were, were uh, killed yes. in, a, in a senseless fashion. Um, one of the young ladies that witnessed five of her friends being shot would not go back to school. She just couldn't um, would not accept herself going back to that building. Understandably. Yeah. And anyway, uh, she received a Guardian Angels Medical Service dog. She's back in school. She's back participating with, with her, her classmates and is readjusting to a terrible disaster. Mm -hmm. um, these animals, these dogs, uh, really change people's lives. The families, the friends, you know, all of that. Yes. So... Uh, the great news is that Guardian Angels is going to have a campus here in the Pittsburgh region, hopefully um, in about a year, uh, opened and operating. 
and we'll be raising and training about 80 dogs at any given time. And those dogs will be available to people with serious needs. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. So the program will be here in the Pittsburgh area, out by the airport. W yep. Uh, probably, uh, you said a year from now? Yeah, we hope. Running. We, we hope to yeah. break ground in three months or so. and uh, When it thaws out. <laughs> yeah, when it thaws out. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. 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 Oh, that, oh is, yeah. that is awesome. So that's another great thing for veterans in, in, in our region and beyond. Uh, but a lot of good things are happening, happening to help veterans. So take us a little bit through the assessment process in order for someone to get one of the dogs. One of the, the assessment processes, you have to fill out a 14-page application that really, they go in great depth as to who you are and because you're getting a dog that costs approximately $25,000 for nothing. Wow. Um, when you really put, when you consider the All time, the, the effort that yeah. goes into raising and training a dog. Right. Uh, so there's an in-depth application process, a lot of uh, questions back and forth between guardian angels, and they have a specialist that really handles the majority of that. And then they have a review board that will sit down and determine who are the individuals that, um, need a medical service dog, have the greatest need for a medical service dog. So um, that could take several months and it may take a year to get a dog. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but um, there's a process, a very in-depth process. Well, let me flip that coin just a little bit. When the, you have, when you have the dog or while you're going through the process of getting the dog, um, I am I'd like to think that there's like veterinarians on board that would tell the families how to care for the dogs, what type of food the dog needs to eat and, and things like that. So it's a learning process for the family. Can you take us through, tell our viewers, you know, a little bit about that process as far as caring for the dog? Yeah, they're very particular uh, guardian angels in terms of um, how you treat the dog, the medical care for the dog. Right the veterinary care for the dog on a routine basis, the kind of food that the dog eats. Uh, it's a quality brand that mm -hmm. they require. Uh, and um, the exercise that the dog gets, all of those factors are very important um, because uh, Guardian Angels actually has what's called a roving trainer. They have several roving trainers now with 300 dogs out there. Uh, where a roving trainer will visit uh, the home of a recipient um, a couple times a year uh, to make sure that the dog is getting the mm -hmm. right um, medical treatment, the right eating the right foods, is not excessively overweight. Uh, all of those very important things, whether or not um, there's the, the, the recipient the, uh, of the dog is reinforcing the training that, right. that, the, that you right. have to do with an animal. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of those factors are very important on an ongoing basis. And, and you have to ensure that the dog is loving the family as much as the family is loving the dog. Yeah, that, that's, it's amazing when you see um, a recipient receive a dog, that love is evident from the first second. Right. Yeah, between... Well, dogs are unconditional Yeah, love. I know. It's, yeah. it's, uh, and, and so, uh, they're magical. They're, they're, uh, um, they're miracle workers. And, and uh, they, they've actually changed lives almost instantaneously uh, with the people that receive them. Do you have any good stories that you could share? Well, there's a number of good stories right in this region um, of veterans uh, who have received the dogs, um, and uh, I've listened to a number of them speak and have said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this dog. Um, I was living in a terrible place. I couldn't deal with some of the things I did in the past and some of the experiences I've had in the military. Um, they, they, 
and many of these uh, individuals have gone through prior to getting a dog divorces and you know the family um, serious family issues yeah. and getting a dog has just turned their life around um, it's helped them keep a job that um, they may not have been able to mm -hmm. um, keep their sanity yes um, two of the prominent uh, employers PNC uh, uh, Armstrong Utilities, um, uh, uh, they have sponsored a number of dogs uh, and uh, the employee, employees that have a dog um, take the dog to work and are very productive employees. Uh, so um, Highmark recently sponsored a dog. Um, so I, I mean it's really um, c catching on around here, the importance of it. Uh, and uh, it, it's so f for us to have a campus that will be built in the Pittsburgh region is a huge plus in terms of our ability to help people. When you say sponsor a dog, how, how does that work? And, and is this is this something that our our viewer our viewers can do or help with or support or how how does this work? Well, they can go to the website for Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs and okay. find a whole. A lot about it. As a matter of fact, when a campus is here and up and running, uh, people will be able to volunteer and do things at the campus. Um, we'll be in a big uh, fundraising mode in terms of mm -hmm. of uh, building the campus. Yeah. Um, it's no uh, small piece of change to do that. It's about a fifteen million dollar campus with about fourteen buildings. A far majority are different life stage buildings for the growth and the training of the dogs. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there'll be a lot of opportunities for the public to engage, one of which is foster homes. And the training of, of the dogs at a certain stage, I think it's about a year into the training, uh, they have to acclimate the dogs with civilian life. Okay. So for eight weeks, they're assigned to a foster home. Mm -hmm. People who really love animals and want to care, and and the re the foster homes then take that dog and let it live in their home for eight weeks. But at the same time, take it to church, take it shopping, take it, you know, on a walk down the neighborhood, and just to better acclimate the dog to a real world right environment. Uh, so outside of the kennels. Outside of the, that. You're the right. buildings. Yes. Yeah. So there, there's uh, a lot of opportunities. There will be more opportunities once the campus is here. Oh, this is awesome. This yeah. is exciting stuff. This is it really is. exciting. Yeah. And thank you for your interest. Oh, in it's, it. it's, it's my Diane. pleasure. I'm, I'm, really? I'm honored. Yeah. I'm honored. No, thank you. I'm honored. For helping us get the word out on two great causes, Pittsburgh Absolutely. Harris Veterans and Guardian Angels medical service dogs. Well, I'm honored to do so. Uh, our veterans mean a lot to me. I've Thank learned you. so much through, <clears throat> excuse me, through this process. And um, I, I just think that we owe it to our veterans mm -hmm. to be more supportive. So thank you, Jack. Yeah. Thank, thank you so you. Thank much. Thank you very much. Pittsburgh hires veterans. An amazing program providing support in gaining education, training, and employment assistance inside and outside of this region. With Pennsylvania having the nation's fourth largest veterans population and Allegheny County having the state's largest of nearly 100,000, this boots on the ground program is designed to assist our veterans and their families in vocational rehabilitation preparation for employment, and helping to set training and educational goals with a staff of professionals who are dedicated to serving our veterans. If you are a military veteran and could use assistance in any of these areas, please reach out to Pittsburgh Hires Veterans and thank you for your service.